the game I'm most looking forward to, Uruguay Ghana, a Ghana revenge game from 2010. Luis Suarez saving the ball. We all understand how that played out and what that meant for Ghana as the African continent rallied around Ghana around that tournament. Just poof, the tournament came to an end. It's so fitting that Ghana come into this game having won and Uruguay needing a victory in this game against Ghana to go advance. Um, Look, there's no data that you can kind of assess to what this game means for Ghana and what sort of X factor that might mean. But just in terms of the way that the teams have played, I think this Ghana side is better than a lot of people gave them credit for, at least from an attacking perspective, bringing in Williams and Lapti. Like, it's made a difference in this team. It's added some quality. In Uruguay, for me, they need to sort out what this attack looks like. Because I, I don't think they look like they have many ideas. Simon, you've watched this Uruguay side more than most. What do you make of what we've seen so far in this tournament? Yeah, so if you go back to the last time these teams met, Uruguay had Forlan, Young Suarez, um, Cavani, Young Cavani. They had Ebreo. They had a lot of attacking quality. And right now, I think the issue is you've still got Suarez there. You've still got Cavani there. But then they're, they're not the players they were. As you, as you mentioned, Suarez not performing at his highest level, playing in, you know back in the Uruguayan league. Cavani as well, obviously still in shape, but not quite uh, competing week to week at the highest level. And then it's the young guys coming through. You know, Darwin Nunez, who hasn't yet, as before the tournament, we're seeing if this would be his moment to establish himself as Uruguay's main man. He hasn't done that quite yet. Um, there Again, 2010, you had lots of experience. Diego Logano, big experienced defenders. And now they're looking a little bit short at the back. So Uruguay have been very flat. Um, for me, it's a team, as I said, that's going through changes. But... One some of the issues is the guys are still hanging in there. You know that this may be a tournament too far for them, so it's going to be a difficult decision by the manager. He will take a proactive approach to trying to find a team that, that resolves these issues that can deal with the threat produced, provided by Ghana. They always switch things up. We saw them playing uh, back three with wing backs in the last game. They could completely change again for this one. Uruguay have quality in that midfield in particular. Um, but we've seen so many changes in attack. Um, I, I Before the tournament, I said, look, this team will remain united. The experienced guys, the young guys, they'll be on the same page. But that doesn't mean the, the importance based upon historical records and prestige won't play a role in picking the team. And, and if Suarez is still being picked and Cavani is still an important player, that for me suggests the manager maybe feels a little bit insecure given he's only had four competitive games before this tournament and perhaps doesn't feel in a position to drop the the big stars who've done, been doing it for a decade. So it'll be fascinating to see what the manager does in terms of the system. There's quality in this Uruguay side. They're competitive, but for me, they look very, very flat and disjointed. And as you say, lacking that, that danger and attack. Flat is the perfect word to call them. Any way that their play becomes inflated, Andrew, from what you've seen thus far? Uruguay, yeah, possibly. I mean, it, it's such a contrast of of how the teams have have played this uh, in this World Cup. You've got Ghana, who've had a three two win and a three two defeat. They've had Uruguay nil nil, and then a two nil to Portugal, which was a ludicrous penalty and a, and a cross that basically went in, uh, which Ronaldo didn't touch, despite what they're uh, appealing for. Um, so it's a very contrasting mixture. And um, I was sort of thinking yesterday, you know, trying to predict all these games, as I mentioned earlier, I think it could be 4-3 Ghana or 1-0 Uruguay. It's got that sort of potential to it of either absolute chaos or the worst game you've probably ever seen. Um, I like Ghana. I think I've enjoyed watching them and I like what they do. So I think they've uh, they've got the possibility here to uh, to win the game, get a bit of revenge and, and knock Uruguay out of the, the tournament. I think they've been very sort of disappointing so far, Uruguay. As you say, Suarez just so far off the pace and um, Nunes not really being involved enough. So, yeah, I think Ghana could uh, could possibly take this one. I just don't think they have much width, Uruguay. When I, when I, it's, it's very predictable. And when he's tried to play with the front three and he started that with Polistri down the right-hand side and the, the, those two players that, that are strikers, they play up top. Asking one of them to play down the left just doesn't suit kind of the personnel that he has. Jake, what do you make of this one? It's a crucial tie in Group H. Yeah, I um I'm really bullish on Uruguay's chances in this game. I really am. Um 
I think um, coming into the tournament, one of the things I was saying about Uruguay was that their defence and their defensive figures under Alonso were pretty sensational. I know he only, as Simon said, only had four competitive games in World Cup qualifying, but they conceded 0.6 expected goals against per game across those games. Um, so far in this tournament, 0.7 against South Korea, 0.52 non-penalty against Portugal. So they're not conceding chances. So defence is a strength of Uruguay. Um, as for Ghana, their attack is their strength. They create a lot of chances. But, you know, strength against the strength. And then if you flip it around, Ghana's defence is a shambles. Like, they are so easily exposed, it's untrue. They've conceded 4.9 expected goals across those two matches so far. So teams that they've played against have had no problems creating chances. South Korea, over two expected goals. Portugal, 2.6. Um, so I, I know what you're saying about Uruguay's attack looking a bit dysfunctional. This is the perfect get-right game for them because they're playing against a defence that is equally as dysfunctional. Um, and I think that the, the quality of Uruguay will will shine through and, uh, and you know, those they've got those finishes and forward areas that can perhaps take more chances than South Korea managed in the last game. Um, I actually think that Uruguay to win to nil is an interesting bet here. Wow. Plus 185. Um, I, I like, I, I think it could be a one nil uh, Uruguay win here because, you know, I just don't see Uruguay making it a really high scoring end to end kind of game. Uh, it's not their style. They rely heavily on the defense and they know that, you know, generally, unless South Korea get a, a, a really good result against Portugal, that, you know, narrow win is going to be enough for them. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see fireworks. I think it'll be very controlled. But one thing is for sure, they will create more chances just because of the defense they're playing against.